What's up everyone and welcome to Ben's Car Reviews. I'm Ben and today we'll be dissecting the 2024 Toyota Sequoia. Let's get right into it with the charts. Alright, your 2024 Sequoia will be available to you in five different trim levels. SR5, Limited, Platinum, Capstone, and TRD Pro. Yes, the Capstone is considered to be that top trim, but the TRD Pro is more expensive. So this is an order of price. Uh, but across these five, there's a price differentiation of nearly $20,000. So hopefully there is one that falls in the range here. And SR5 is starting you off at $61,000 and change. So there's a lot of uh, high price tags here. A little overwhelming if you want to get into one of these. Engine options, it's one and only. It's going to be the iForce Max engine, which is the twin turbo V6 with the hybrid. So a lot of power to be had here with 437 horsepower, 583 pound-feet of torque. That is a lot of power. Uh, definitely, you know, kind of makes this feel like it's a performance vehicle. Yes, it's huge, so you kind of need that kind of power to move this thing effectively, but uh, that's definitely more than you need. So definitely a fun aspect there. Paired with a 10-speed auto, which is great to see. As far as the drive train goes, those first four, or I should say, SR5, or all but the TRD Pro, can be optioned uh, with either two-wheel or four-wheel drive configurations. TRD Pro will be uh, only four-wheel drive setup. MPGs, not too shabby. You're going to suffer a little bit more with the TRD Pro, um, but considering the size of this vehicle and its engine, I am uh, a little bit uh, surprised it's as high as it is, even with the hybrid. I just figured it would be... Um, less than it is but still this is not that great considering it's a hybrid real quick guys here ben's car reviews i strive to bring the most accurate relevant information in our 10 minutes there's no misleading and no wasted time if that's something that's intriguing to you and you like this content as you watch please like and subscribe so you can continue to grow the channel let's keep going the new look sequoia is back again for 2024 and man does it look good price tags are super high but no doubt the exterior and interior looks for this thing are off the charts not to mention that toyota reliability if I had the cash and I was looking to buy an SUV of this caliber, it would be hard to buy something else over this. If you're worried about the hybrid aspect here, Toyota says the nickel metal hydride battery is designed to last the life of your Sequoia, and I'm inclined to believe them, considering Toyota is always at the top of the list for all their models and reliability. LED lights are standard all around for your headlights, taillights, and daytime running lights, and standard fog lights also. Available auto leveling headlights as well. The headlight design is obviously very similar to the design cues of other models in the lineup, like the Tundra or the new Tacoma. It's even a little difficult to tell initially if this is a Tundra or Sequoia if it's coming towards you on the road. All but the TRD Pro will get you a single exhaust tip, and the TRD Pro has a dual tip. Wheel designs are very well done and will be in sizes of 18, 20, or 22 inches. I love the look of big wheels, but all I hear is how rough they ride. I don't know this firsthand, but at least they look nice. All but the TRD Pro will have all season tires as well. There's an available electric locking rear differential for that max grip and power to the rear wheels. Standard multi-link rear suspension going to deliver smooth ride comfort and towing stability. There's an available load leveling rear height control air suspension that can help level the vehicle by lowering or raising the vehicle's height according to driving conditions. There's also an available adaptive uh, variable suspension. Available crawl control works to provide optimal traction over rugged terrain by modulating the throttle and brake controls automatically. So definitely some advanced features here in terms of, you know, the mechanics, the performance of it. The TRD Pro is going to get you the superb, superb TRD enhanced suspension with those Fox shocks. Obviously, Fox is a big name when it comes to suspension, delivering a great product, along with 18-inch forged BBS wheels wrapped in Falcon wild peak all terrain tires it's also getting you a standard light bar across its heritage grill not to mention those amber lights on the grill that look spot on here and nobody can call you a wannabe raptor because toyota brings them stock from the factory below it uh, to finish out that menacing front end on that trd pro is a trd aluminum front skid plate with a red painted front coil springs and a stabilizer bar max towing is rated for nine thousand 520 pounds which is aided by the level the load leveling rear height uh, control air suspension the tow technology package is equipped with a digital display rear view mirror and trailer backup guide with straight path assist and you'll get drive modes of tow haul and tow plus and finally for towing there's an available power folding extending and retracting tow mirrors 
Uh, so definitely you can really deck yourself out with towing capability here, which is great to see. This beast measures in at 208.1 inches long, 79.8 inches wide, 74.5 inches tall, and weighs in as high as 6,150 pounds on the TRD Pro. Packages include the SR5 Premium Package, TRD Pro Grade Package, Capstone Grade Package, Capstone Grade with Power Mirrors, Tow Technology Package as mentioned, TRD Sport Package, TRD Off-Road Package, and Nightshade Package, all available on different trims, but definitely offering some nice things within those packages. I think the best bang for your buck is the Limited or the SR5 with the Premium Package. Both are the cheapest ways to get the big screen and extra nice standard interior features, which we'll get into next without reaching super crazy high price tags. But yes, of course, they're already super expensive. So let's check out that interior and see what you're getting for your money. A really quite stunning interior here for the Sequoia. Certainly one of the best I've seen across my trim breakdown since I started. The design is super attractive and the features to be had are top notch. And it looks like there's as much room as a heavy duty truck in the front seats. Opting for the second row bench seats will get you seating capacity of eight people, which is fantastic whereas captain, captain's chairs will limit it to seven. The third row has a six inch sliding and power folding uh, feature there with adjustable cargo shelf system and an option for being power folding also. The SR5 is going to get a smaller screen than the rest with eight inches for the infotainment screen. The others are getting a much larger 14 inch screen. Wireless Apple CarPlay Android Auto capability all trims will get a 12.3 inch full color multi-information display. There's a 10 inch heads up display on the capstone standard. Wireless charging is available. Three zone climate control is standard and so are rear vents. You'll either get a standard sunroof or standard panoramic moonroof depending. The moonroof can be optioned on some of the lower trims as well that's not standard on. An eight speaker audio system is standard and top trims will get the 14 speaker JBL premium audio system. Heated steering wheel is standard on the limited and up, and an option on the base SR5. Heated front seats are standard, ventilated becomes standard on the limited. Heated and ventilated first and second row seats on the capstone. Seating materials range from fabric to soft tex to leather to semi aniline leather at the top, and you'll have eight or 10 way power adjustment. That TRD Pro um, is stunning in red or black technical ammo coloring and great badging. I really like the look of that TRD Pro interior. Toyota Safety Sense will land you many great standard driver's assist, safety and technology features, and more are optional. Overall, clearly this interior is getting the business done. I'm severely disappointed about that bottom trim SR5 getting a smaller screen. That's a $60,000 vehicle that apparently isn't worthy of the larger screen, which is blasphemy in my opinion. I get Toyota needs to build up from somewhere, like the base trim, they got a few more above that, but that wasn't the right move. Interview guys, if you're in the market for a full-size giant SUV here, seating capacity up to eight, uh, and you're loving look at the Sequoia, I think you're really going down the right path in terms of quality and what it's bringing to the table. As far as competition goes, it's going up against some big players, Chevy Tahoe, Chevy Suburban, GMC Yukon, um, you know, Jeep Wagoneer, Lexus LX, Ford Expedition, I mean, all of those big guys that are offering that seating uh, capacity is really what I'm comparing this to, not to mention just ginormous vehicles in general. Um, price tags do compare to this as well, but this is certainly on the higher end. Um, some of those other ones like the Tahoe, Suburban, even the Yukon, the base trim is not starting you at $60,000. I mean, this is a lot of money to spend just to get into this vehicle, even if you go for the most bare bones setup possible. So. I am a tad disappointed to see that from Toyota. I get their offering, you know, most likely I don't own the vehicle. I'm not going to say for sure, you know, a stellar product because that's really all Toyota delivers. Uh, very reliable, you know, long lasting. Sequoia has been a long lasting vehicle in their lineup, you know, sold a lot of them. Uh, great to see that it's back, but I'm not seeing many of these on the road. I have to imagine it's because it's just so expensive to get into one of these. Um, Whereas for that money, say you have $60,000 to spend. Um, there's a lot elsewhere where you can maybe get more for that money. So people are probably going to opt for that. But this is what you want in the end. I think you're making a great decision. I'm jealous of you. I'd love one of these. Should be a great vehicle for years to come. Hopefully this video laid out and cleared away for you guys. Thank you for watching Spence Car Review. Please subscribe if not already. If you have an idea for a future review, drop them in the comments and I'll see what I can do. If you'd like to become a member of the channel, I have that option now. Check that out. Join if you'd like. I'll catch you on the next Spence Car Review.